In this tutorial, I'll be providing you with an easy introduction to creating a track analysis as required by the assessment in Introduction to the Sound Studio. We're going to use the drawing tools in Microsoft Word uh, to create a graphical representation of the mix of a popular music track. You can choose any style of music you like. I'm going to choose one of my favorite easy listening classics from the 1970s, Shower the People by James Taylor. You can play the game and you can act out the part Though you know it wasn't written for you The task requires that you present analysis from two separate sections of the piece. With a popular song of this type, this is easy. I just choose one verse and one chorus and describe the instrumentation and mix features of the mix in each section. So the first thing we're going to do is look at the uh, drawing tools in Microsoft Word. Now these change uh, in each version, um, but uh, in this particular version of Microsoft Word, uh, the tools are under the Insert menu and uh, select Shape. And we get a palette of useful shapes. Uh, these are ideal for the uh, work that we want to do. Now the first thing that we're going to do is create a um, create a, an analysis space and the vertical axis is going to be measured uh, in octaves and uh, so I'm going to start by m mapping out uh, nine equal octaves. Here we go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I'm using the option key uh, to click and drag to select a copy. Uh, you can use uh, Control C, Control V for copy and paste on a PC. Um, so our vertical axis is going to be the stereo sound field from left to right. So we're going to divide that roughly in half. And uh, we start with a line that goes to the center and another line which goes to the other half. This is our center mark. This is left. This is right. And we're going to put in some frequency uh, designation here. Insert. I'm looking for text box. Here it is. And we're going to draw a little text box in here. And uh, we'll start with the um, ISO standard uh, frequency centers, or thereabouts, 30 hertz to 60 hertz for our bottom octave. Um, uh, 60 to 125. Our next octave. So this is the sub bass, uh, bass. Uh, low mids, one two five to two fifty. Two fifty to five hundred. Now high mids, 500 up to 1K. Um, uh, sorry, that's uh, mid range, not high mids. Uh, here we go, 1,000, oh, let's call it 1K to 2K. Still in the mid range there. Get up into the high mids, 2K to 4K. And then into the high frequency. Four K to eight K and eight K onwards. An octave would be to sixteen K. 
let's just call it 8 to 20. Okay, so now we've got our space uh, to create our graph in. And uh, we're going to go away and uh, have a listen to our piece carefully uh, through headphones and uh, listen to the instrumentation. Tell me how can you stand there with your broken heart? Now you'll see uh, we're going to create a three-dimensional space, left to right for the stereo sound field, bottom to top for the uh, frequency spectrum, and using the ability to have overlapping shapes, uh, we'll see that we uh, can indicate depth front to back. Now the feature in this mix which is most present, uh, closest to the listener, is the main vocal. Shame to play the fool. But one thing can be to another. And then next, uh, I would say the feature um, that's uh, next most prominent is the acoustic guitar. To listen again just to see how that acoustic guitar works, steel string acoustic. It doesn't take any sacrifice. Recorded in stereo, quite a wide sound. Um, so let's start by uh, inserting our main uh, vocal. So I'm going to choose a, an oval shape. And um, we can assume, now uh, let's have a go at this. We're going to, so the upper uh, end of the frequency spectrum for the male vo voice finishes around uh, 5K. Um, and uh, the pitch uh, starting down here around middle C and it's quite a narrow sound Don't think twice, just shower the people. okay we're into the chorus there uh, we'll go back to the um, go back to the verse and uh, it's very tight in the center doesn't have much reverberation just shuffle it into the center there Shame to play the fool. But one thing can be to another. It doesn't take any sacrifice. Okay, one thing I would say about this is that uh, it has quite clear um, a small hall type reverberation uh, with uh, reasonable pre delay. Uh, and that smears the main vocal. So I'm just going to try an experiment here. Um, copy and paste. And uh, I'm just going to turn right the transparency on that second one right up. And uh, it's going to smear that. And um, this is the uh, reverberation from our main vocal. Thank you. Something like that. And then, okay, I've right uh, control clicked or right clicked and uh, arrange. I'm going to send this uh, to right to the back because its uh, reverb is um, quite subtle in the mix. And uh, yeah into the text for this uh, add text uh, main vocal. okay I'll try and make that text fit uh, format text effects uh, vertical alignment horizontal 90 degrees clockwise okay Okay, that's the main vocal. Uh, now I think I've changed my mind about that uh, acoustic guitar. Uh, let's just have a quick listen again. You know it wasn't written for you. But tell me how can you stand there with your broken heart? Ashamed to play the fool. I believe it's double tracked. Um, so let's try and make a, make a shape. Um, to represent that uh, double-tracked uh, acoustic guitar. 
Okay, now um, bottom E string of the acoustic guitar is uh, um, down here somewhere. It's uh, an E, so it's just above that uh, C there. Um, and they're reasonably sparkly looking guitars. Uh, although the uh, fundamental doesn't go all the way up here, um, the attack um, Uh, the brightness of the sound places uh, it somewhere up here. I'm going to um, turn up the uh, uh, transparency format shape. Here it is. Okay. Put in there. Might need to change that. And uh, arrangement so it goes behind the vocal. So arrange, uh, send backward. There we go. And um, uh, guitar, track one. And uh, we're going to make a duplicate. Might have made them a little bit wide, perhaps, uh, and uh, I probably overlap a little bit more. It's not an exact science, this, but it's definitely an interesting exercise to do. It gets you listening carefully. Um, so this is going to be uh, set up that text, T2. and uh, arrange send backward. Great, now um, I noticed that the uh, bass drum and bass guitar are both very prominent and uh, they're both panned center and our bass drum is uh, doing its business down here and uh, it's uh, Also very narrow. Let's call it kick. Um, arrange. Uh, send backward. Uh, try and center it up a bit. Uh, of course, it won't go perfectly center because of the size that we've made it. Uh, it's got to be narrower than the voice. Yep, that's looking good. And uh, is it in front of or behind the guitar? When one thing can be to another It doesn't take any sacrifice Whoa, father and mother, sister and brother If it feels nice, don't think twice Hard to say. Let's uh, we'll just pop it back. I don't think it's as prominent as the acoustic guitar. Uh, arrange, send it backward, and uh, oh, there you go. It's in between the two. <laughs> and we need our bass guitar, um, and it's sitting. So uh, it's an octave below the acoustic guitar, um, down here somewhere, and. Um, it's a similar sort of uh, in the center to the boom boom boom. Uh, probably gets up to there, doesn't it? Uh, um, and we're going to range them backward and we're going to uh, modify its transparency oh yes transparency tools available there now um, that's looking good that's uh, that's great okay um what else do we have a conga uh, some sort of hand played Tune drum. Let's have a listen to that. Mm -hmm. 
Spiel coming in there at the end. Um, <clears throat> I have to say I'm not 100% clear on where that conger is. Oh, you know, I think that is uh, stereo recorded. Um, uh, and so um, what we're going to do is uh, make a new shape. And the conga is sitting around in here, 3K, 2K, 500 round there. And it's not too big, you know. Um, conga, and it's uh, it's recorded in stereo, but it's uh, not as wide as the guitar. So you can see I'm kind of thinking as I'm going along here. I'm going to make these guitars a bit bigger. And uh, I'm going to figure out what I want to do with this conga. It goes right in the mid-range there. Uh, 500 boxiness at the bottom and the slap at around uh, 2 or 3k. And uh, arrange, send, backward. Uh, we're going to have to increase the transparency of this so we can see yeah, there it is. Um, transparency of this. And uh, we're going to arrange some backward. Arrange some backward. There it is. Um, oops. Conga range some backward. Uh, can't see its text there. Um, so um, I might just uh, pop one of these in. Um, conga. Uh, let move my arrow there, conga. Good. Um, I think that's pretty much uh, got it. Let me just uh, try capture the full display there, so you can see my analysis. So we've got a three-dimensional uh, representation of our piece. Um, don't forget. Uh, the title, uh, the composer or performer, and the year of release. Just a brief postscript uh, to correct a few errors there. Uh, I've included uh, some more information here. Instrumentation, male, vocal, double tracked steel, string, acoustic guitar, electric, bass, guitar, bass, drum, conga. An important list of features to include in your report. Uh, the bits that aren't so clearly defined here uh, vocal reverb that we put in early um, and uh, the call out for the conga there, just uh, the things that are difficult to read. I mentioned earlier that uh, uh, I misnamed the horizontal axis as the vertical axis. A horizontal axis obviously uh, contains the stereo sound field. In fact, let's insert text box down here and make that explicit. Uh, stereo field the text pop that in there so we can read it excellent um, in fact we might even um, make it that even clearer left right 
Okay, so I think that's um, those little additions were worth making. And that concludes this tutorial. I'm going to make another analysis uh, for um, the chorus in which uh, we introduce some additional percussion instruments, uh, very dense uh, backing vocals, typical of James Taylor, um, of that, uh, that early Apple sound. Um, I hope you enjoyed this. I look forward to seeing your track analyses.